Hello YouTube, it's Sean from the 3311 Ottawa Senators podcast here. Something completely different on my retro gaming channel here um, as I look to branch out and just cover different content along the way. Um, so I'm an avid Ottawa Senators fan. I uh, started to watch the team in 2001, 2002 when I took my year out in Ottawa. I went over to sort of meet family uh, that we've got in the area. Obviously I'm from the UK, Portsmouth, um, and uh, that's on the south coast of the UK. Avid Ottawa Senators fan and um, try to watch as many games as I can on the NHL network. Um, managed to watch most of the games last year and also managed to attend a few games in person, which we'll touch upon in this coming episode. So this is an episode, this is a um, video, just three guys just chatting about the Ottawa Senators. Um, they're both my cousins, uh, Blake and Brian, and um, we... Um, we just chat through hockey in this video. We chat through the Ottawa Senators, a little bit of last season. Let's get the old season out. Let's get the new season in. We chat about everything. We chat about trades that have been made, what our expectations are for the season. We even open a few packs of retro, in my case, uh, hockey cards, um, which I was hugely disappointed by at the end. Um, spoiler, don't buy these cards. They are rubbish. But anyway, um, yes. So, Guys, why is it called the 3311? Is it because I'm a huge fan of Jason York and Pascal Leclerc and Daniel Alfredson with those associated numbers? Unfortunately, it's not. I'm a huge fan of two of those players that I just mentioned in Jason York and Daniel Alfredson. But it actually signifies the distance in miles from Portsmouth, my hometown, to the Canadian Tire Centre in Canada. Um, I couldn't think of anything better, um, so it was just off the cuff, really. But um, I think it works all right. So um, anyway, guys, without further ado, I just wanted to record this part of the video again because I forgot to press record on StreamYard and we were already 40 minutes into it. So I thought, don't worry, I'll just re-record that part and we'll start again. So the first sort of 20 minutes of the video you were just about to watch was re-recorded. Um, I think we missed a few gold mines that we sort of uh, touched on in the first part, but I think in, in the actual episode itself, it's come out really well. So I hope you enjoy, guys. Please feel free to add your comments below um, because we are hoping to do future episodes uh, just to catch up on the Sens and how they're doing and see how badly this video ages through the season because we've all made some bold claims. So let's see what happens. Hope you enjoy. Hello, Blake. How are you doing? I'm great, Sean. How about yourself? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. We've recorded this once already. I've got it on my phone, but I don't have it on the laptop. So we're doing it all again. We are starting <laughs> again. We lost about 20 minutes, I would say. But anyway... Blake, how are you doing, mate? You good? I'm good. Yeah. Good, good. Well, so straight away, we've already done this, so it's totally ruined. But anyway, um, Blake, do you know how far away you are from the Canadian Tire Centre, where you are? In miles. In miles. Okay, a Church of England here. Uh, I'm going to guess 10 to 15 miles. Well, you know what? You've absolutely nailed that. Absolutely nailed that. Blake, really? You are 13 and a half miles away. So we're doing the same thing that we did for the channel name, for the channel, for the video series name, the 3311, which I've explained in the earlier part of this video, which I would have shot the following day because I don't want to spend 20 minutes again entering the video. Um, yes. So do you know 14 and 13 numbered players for the Senators that could represent your channel name? Oh, I'm going to have to go back here. Uh, Radic Bonk for 14. 14. Yeah, to be fair, you did get Radic Bonk the first time around, so we can give you that anyway. Can you remember 13s? 13. Not Fisher. Fisher was 12. Oh, boy. Uh, Yuri Sminkle from a late, late season. Yuri Sminkle. Yeah, that's good. I'll, I'll take that. And... Ooh... I'm drawing a blank here. That's all I can think of. Good. The only other two I've got are uh, uh, Prospel and Nick Paul. So they were probably just before your time. Nick Paul wasn't. I think it was about 2016. Um, yeah. But anyway. Yeah, Nick Paul was a decent player, actually. So so you did a few games last year, didn't you, Blake? Quite a few, yeah. Yeah, so what was it you said earlier? It was about 10 or 12 games over the season? About that, yeah, I would think. So when you were there, so did you notice as the season went on, mm -hmm. that it sort of 
the, the fans started to lose a bit of like literally because last year everything was so promising every yeah. everything was going to go well we had the goaltending sorted we had we had like everything sorted we had Chikram was playing for us as well it was all golden I remember being over there which we'll touch on in a minute in um about a year ago today actually I was over with you guys um I remember being over there it was all so positive all so positive and it just went so wrong did you notice throughout the months that you were going to the Sens because I think you went pretty much once a month at least did you notice that it sort of the actual tension was getting like it was degrading and everyone was just turning on the team I felt like a lot of people were turning on the coach on DJ Smith now I'm, I'm not gonna chant uh, I heard a lot of fire DJ chants but I'm not gonna root for somebody to lose their job even though I feel like they might deserve it but that's the reality of being a coach in the National Hockey League. You get hired to get fired. Mm -hmm. Every coach has a shelf life, unless you're Scotty Bowman and you, you, you win your last cup with Detroit and you retire a champion. But that's a, that's a pretty ex exceedingly rare circumstance. Yeah, definitely. I totally, totally agree. And also, you were there for a few of the fan giveaways last year, weren't you? Yes. So what sort of stuff did you pick up? Because I heard about the bobbleheads. Was there anything I, else given out? I got a Chucky bobblehead, Brady Chuck, and I got a Tim Stutzler bobblehead as well. And and I was there for Star Wars night. It oh, was, that was the other one. Yeah, I was, but, but what it was. I was able to get my hands on that Star Wars themed puzzle. Wasn't it the first like three thousand people got that or something? It wasn't. I it wasn't can't a lot, was it? Exact number. Man, I bet they go on eBay for a fortune. I've seen some of the bobbleheads on eBay, but um, I have held off buying one at the moment. But um, uh, did you go to any of the fan fest things and stuff, like to pick up any merchandise out of out of like the, the game used stuff? I did. Um, some of that might get sent over to you, by the way. <laughs> I'm going to give you a budget next time. I'm going to plan ahead and I'm going to send some money over and just say, <laughs> look, just go nuts. Just buy whatever you want, okay? I just need yeah. some stuff sent over. So we'll, we will do that. Uh, I will make sure I set a note for next year to do that. So they happen at the end of the season, right? Just around the draft and and just before the season starts, from memory? For FanFest? Yeah. Uh, well, the preseason FanFest was this past weekend, which I went to on Saturday. For And I sat in on a You were able to sit in on a practice, which was really nice. Yeah, they treat the practice, the they the treat practice like it's a real game, which yeah. and Tra Travis Green was running them hard, which which I like to see. Same thing with Alfie. Alfie was running them hard as well. Yeah, that's good. I mean, that's the one thing I'd say. I mean, the footage would have been in here you sent me. Um, and you're, it looked actually like yeah, it looked like a proper game scenario that they were in. So um, yeah, yeah, it looked pretty pretty decent. So um, yeah, well I'm. Yeah, I'm going to be stoked to hear what you're uh, going to pick up at the... Because uh, apparently they've got more promotions coming this year. So um, we'll, we'll see what happens there. But um, World yeah, Juniors so. coming back to Ottawa in December. Yeah, isn't it? The Senders are playing on the road for 13 games in a row to allow for the World yeah, Juniors. Yeah, there's, there's roughly a month, bet uh, roughly one calendar month between games, between home games at the Canadian Tire Centre. Oh, man. Are you going to get to any of the World Juniors? I want to, but Hockey Canada is being a little bit greedy with the ticket prices. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah. So oh, there's only two locations. There's being Canadian Tire Center is the main location for it. Uh, but the other spot is going to be uh, the rink at TD Place where the Ottawa 67s of the OHL play. Mm -hmm. So. Wow. <clears throat> okay. So what sort of money are they talking about? Because we see that over here for certain England games, the soccer uh, sort of team, going to Wembley, there's like a band A, band B and band C. So if you go see a band C game, it's like it's like £20 cheaper to go, uh, you know, at least. Um, is it similar to that? So, so certain nations, like it would be a lot cheaper. Uh, well, let's put it this way. It's more expensive than when the Leafs are in town. Let me put it that way. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. That is crazy. Even for like, you know, mid 300 level, lower 300 level seats, it's it's crazy expensive. And I believe the last time the tournament was here was in was for the 2009 tournament, mm -hmm. 
which Canada handily won they, by beating Sweden in the gold medal game. That was a that was a pretty cool game. I remember that that O nine like. team. Oh my god, that team was stacked. They had Dustin Tokarski, who by the way is on a PTO right now with Ottawa. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I saw he's with them at the moment, isn't he? Yeah, uh, you you had in the semifinal game against the Russians. Um, I'm trying to think of his name now. I I can picture him. Oh god, I can I can picture I can picture him. But anyway. Scoring with, I think it was five and a half seconds to go in the third period oh. by the game, and and then you go on to win said game in a shootout to go to the gold medal game against the Swedes. Was it Yakupov who went to Edmonton? No, this was before Yakupov's time. Uh, uh, Eberle, okay, Jordan about. Eberle. It was Jordan Eberle who scored to tie the game. Right. With, okay. And with about five uh, seconds to go in the I've, third period. And then I feel like it's on the tip of my Gordon's call was then subsequently ruined by Pierre Maguire. <laughs> no, not the best time that thing's been said, I'm sure. So, um, no, and it won't be the anyway. last. Won't be the last. <laughs> anyway, Blake, thanks for joining us, mate. Let's get in, Brian. Hello. Again, Brian. <laughs> I can't believe we're doing this all over again. And it's all down to me. So, uh, Brian, in fact, we did forget to do this part the last time around. We did. So, Brian, do you know, do you know, like I just said to Blake, how many miles away you are from the Canadian Tire Centre? Uh, Roughly. I think I'm about 3,500 kilometres away. I, I, I'm going to go here. So, I'm going to tell you that you're 200. Okay, just tell me. 200... <laughs> 2,303 miles away from the Canadian Tire Centre. So if we are going by those numbers, mm -hmm. the players that you've got to choose from are pretty immense. So is there anyone you can remember who's worn 23 and 3? Oh, number 3. Wasn't that Sammy Salo? Sammy Salo is one of them, yeah. Uh, and then number 23, I, I couldn't tell you. So you can either have Travis Hamannick, from this year. Okay. You could have Carol Rakunic. You could have Zdeno Chera for number three. Oh, yeah, that's so right. A few... you, oh, I would, definitely got... take Chara. I would definitely take Chara. Chara, I take, bad... I do Chara and Hamannick. Yeah, I do Chara and you, Hamannick. You've not got a bad, you've not got a bad selection there. I'd well, say wait, well, I thought so Chara was 33 when he was with Ottawa. You know what? You know what? I thought that. I was looking and I was trawling trying to think. I definitely have a Chara jersey and it's 33. But it's free. Oh. So... I know, I'm exactly the same, but it's because he's worn 33 at the Islanders, Boston, and yeah, it's so weird. I thought that. I was trawling through my old programs trying to find a 33 jersey because I, obviously, with 33 11 for mine, I was going to be like, yeah, you know what? Jason York, Pascal Leclerc, Jadeno Chara. I was like, so I would have got that horribly wrong if I'd just gone with my memory because it was not right whatsoever. So, um, anyway, I had that jersey out and I forgot to show that last time, so I'm glad ah. we're sort of doing this again. But anyway. So everything happens for a reason, eh? So um, anyway, um, so as we touched on, Brian is up in Revelstoke. So he is a long, long way away from the Canadian Tire Centre. Um, um, but um, you managed to watch a few of the sort of um, the other leagues last year, didn't you? So you saw Tiju a few times for Kelowna. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so my, my wife and I split our time between Revelstoke and uh, Spokane. She's American, works as a firefighter. She's a big, she's a badass. Um, but, uh, yeah, I went, we're walking distance to the, uh, to where the Spokane Chiefs play. So I got to watch Tijaginla play against the Spokane Chiefs, Tijaginla and the Kelowna Rockets, I should say, um, play against the Spokane Chiefs in the first meeting in Cologne in, in, in Spokane, um, was, uh, a physical affair. There were a lot of fights, and it was. I loved it. I'm not gonna lie. I loved it. Tijaginla. I think he got like over fifteen over fifteen penalty minutes assigned to him that game. I don't know what happened in the game in the previous meeting between the two teams, but it sure made for some entertaining hockey. <laughs> I've got to admit, I was I was really hoping we got Tijaginla in the draft. 
just so, because the glowing reports he was giving him, and also he was so, he really picked his game up from Christmas like this year, um, just gone. And like I remember just after I came back from Canada, when I came over to surprise Brian, they came back for yep. um, they came he and his lovely wife Joanna came back to Ottawa um, after to, basically for a second wedding, um, and then I surprised them at the house. Um, so I got to hang out with Blake for a little while as well. So we sort of caught up and uh, we actually went and saw a uh, Sens game, which we were all um, all happy to attend. We saw, it was actually about a year ago today that we went, um, not today, but about a year ago. And we went to see the Canadians versus um, the Ottawa Senators in a pre-season match. Um, it went pretty well, um, even though they lost. I really, really enjoyed it. We had some amazing seats. Um, oh, it was great. Some pictures from when we went. I mean, we weren't. Too, what was it you said earlier? About eight rows back? It was something ridiculous like Above, that, wasn't it? Behind the bench, the Ottawa bench. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. And it was so weird being there. So that's the first time I've been back to um, the Canadian Tire Centre since, like, I think it was. I don't even. I, I want to say it was called Scotiabank Place the last time I went. That was 2009. So, yeah, yeah probably it would have been. Um, the vault. But yeah. It's, Absolutely crazy, and uh, there we are. Now, I, I touched on this a minute ago. We got photo bombs. Just looking back now, we got photo bombs. Some, some Montreal Canadiens fan in that, but uh, yeah, it's hard to believe this was like a year ago. Um, and obviously, there's uh, there's Joanna there. Brian's um, oh, I'm on the wrong screen. A lovely Brian's wife. Like, absolutely loving it. So um, yeah, so uh, it was uh, fun times had by all, um, and I think that all rekindled our love uh, for the Ottawa Senators then as well. So sort of. Especially for Blake, he started going an awful lot after that. So, um, and I'm going so, to the home opener next Thursday evening. I was just about to ask, are you planning to go to the home opener? Was it quite easy to get hold of tickets? It wasn't terrible, although for, un, unlike last year's home opener, when I was four rows behind the glass for when they played the Flyers, I am in the first row of Section 324. Uh, right, okay. So you're going to be close to the Locked On Sens boys. I think they're in that area. They've, they've oh. bought up a lot of tickets. How much was you my ticket? No, I think they uh, bought no, up a lot of tickets. Oh. Yeah, they bought up a lot. I think they, I think they've got like something like thirty or forty tickets wow. they bought up. So um, there's a big group of them. So if you do see them, yeah, go over and say hi. They're, they're lovely guys. So, um, but uh, I was lucky enough also. I obviously being in sort of Europe, um, I was incredibly lucky to be able to go to the Global Series, and um, I managed to see uh, the Alex the Brinkat hate up close and personal <laughs> um, because I had a seat literally like in the front row and that was my view with Corpus Allo and you know we've got um, we've got uh, Bernard Dorker and stuff that are coming out there but literally I was literally on the um, I'll probably put some video in here anyway um, of it but I was literally right by that is my seat literally um, and then I was lucky enough also to meet Chris Phillips, which was amazing at the um, at the uh, sort of uh, global series sort of fan park. Uh, the Sens TV guys were around and they did. Uh, they came up to me and asked where I wanted to be recorded, and they gave me an amazing Jacob Chikrin hat, which is 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 aging pretty badly as a <laughs> look at it now. <laughs> but um, yeah, um, I was. I think I think they asked me if I was planning to stick around. Um, for the second game, so I only went to the Detroit game, and I said that I had to get home. Unfortunately, I had a family bereavement that day, uh, so I would have had. To, I was going to come home anyway. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, that was a bit of a shock out of the blue. So I would have come home anyway. But literally, this was shot just before I got a phone call to say, you know, something had happened at home, so I had to come home, um, which I was going to be coming home anyway. Um, but I was pretty sure they were going to offer me like free tickets to go to the Minnesota game, which I will never know what they offered because I don't think anyone else could stick around. So the video that I was on on the Sens um, YouTube channel, uh, they interviewed me and stuff, and I, I got to I got to uh, meet Chris Phillips there, which I got closer to Chris Phillips there than I got to Daniel Alfredson, even though I was sitting on the aisle where they came out. I put my hand out for a fist pump with uh, Daniel Alfredson, and he gave me this nervous sort of like. Like, oh, I would love to, but I would have to sort of fist pump everyone else. And he, he let me down. He let me down big time. So, um, yeah, I'd I, I always live uh, literally rejected by Daniel Alfredson. That is my, uh, that is something I will, I don't think I'll ever truly get over as a Sens fan. But uh, anyway, so, um, yeah. So, guys, um, the season just been a bit of a car crash, wasn't it? Um, 
let's just put that to the side now. That is all done. In the past, the Corpus Allo project didn't work. Um, and there was many things last year that didn't work, let's be honest. And uh, But is there anything you want to say just on last season before we get into the new season? 24-25 is where it's at and things are going to change from now on. Uh, just before you get to that, there, there's, that's how close I got to Daniel Alfredson. Oh, that's just that's just showing off, literally. I I got probably about yeah yeah I I, I can't top that. I can't top that. That was when you worked at a bike store, right? Yeah, that's when I worked north of Ottawa. He came into the store and he put on some weight, and I didn't realize it was him. And my opening line to him was, "Has anybody ever told you you look like Daniel Alfredson?" <laughs> he told me, "I am Daniel Alfredson." My nine in, inner nine-year-old was like, "Oh my God, it's Daniel Alfredson!" Oh! Here, sign this saddle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Blake's gonna pull out a, a picture on his phone now of him meeting like Alex the Brinkat, which we can all go. Oh, no, no, no chance, Blake. You've lost this. You've lost this. Yeah. Mate. <laughs> so let's move on. Last season is last season. Um, yeah. Managed to get to a few games, and we've rekindled our love of hockey again. Um, not love of hockey, but just being able to see it and stuff. And mm -hmm. we all reconnected through seeing the Sens as well and sort of me coming over to see you guys again. But um, anyway, we are moving on to the new season. And we're going to start off with transactions, what we all think. So let's just touch, first of all, Linus Allmark's new lid that he's wearing. Absolutely insane mask design. Um, it reminds me of two... Uh, there's two standouts for me personally. What did you guys think of the the unveil of the mask i absolutely love it i think it's a great throwback to when patty laleem was was the go-to goalie for the senators way back in the day uh if if i remember correctly uh not that it's related but in a game in i think late 2001 patty laleem got into a fight a goalie fight with felix or felix pot van in a game right before christmas and I, I, but but then I thought, you know what? It's he, it, it's he's got a few modern twists to it. With, with on his mask, he's he's got a, what I can best describe as stick figures, for his, yeah. for him and his wife and their two children. Which which I thought was a pretty nice touch, but but Marvin the Martian on the crown of the mask, I thought, you know what? That's primo. That that's who knows. Maybe it'll bring. Maybe it'll help us. Uh, help it bring us back to the promised land. We'll see. Who who knows? Speaking of promised land, I promised you guys some footage. Now I've already. Mm -hmm. I managed to get this in pretty well on the last part of the video, but I forgot to do it this time. Let's watch the Sens versus the Leafs on NHL 24. I updated the rosters. We're going to have something playing to the side of us here. Our faces are pretty. We know that. But we wanted to put something else on the screen that just, you know, adds a bit of spice to the video. So, um, yeah, uh, the sound isn't on here, so the guys can't hear it. But the, the footage that's on this video will have sound. But um, it's just too much feedback and stuff. But anyway, so there was a Leafs versus Sens game here. This was amazing to record this game. Um, I let it play whilst I was doing a few office admin tasks in the morning. I let it play for an hour and I sent a screenshot of the final tallies. The shots were insane, and it can only happen on a simulated hockey game. It was like it was like nearly a hundred shots for each team, but it was absolute chaos. But anyway, I'll leave this going here. So, um, sorry, yeah. To go back to the the Allmark, um, the Allmark mask, it reminds me. I, I mean, from being in Sweden last year and seeing Corpus Allo's mask up really close, that was a real work of art last year. I think that was a really nice mask. Um, great, you know, he's obviously spent a lot of time, sadly, putting uh, all that stuff together. And how well has he started in Boston, by the way? He's looked really good. He looks like a totally different goaltender all of a sudden. <laughs> but, um, you know, they've really shot themselves in the foot with Jeremy Swayman as well, training away all Mark. I mean, it's it, it's absolutely insane how how wrong things have gone. For <laughs> like from having two elite goaltenders to now having Jonas Corposalo. Um yeah, it's pretty insane. But um, he had an absolutely amazing mask uh, last season. And obviously Patrick Laleem, as we've touched on. And also, it's it, one of my favourite masks. It was so simple, but it just looks so cool. And that was Dominic Hashuk's, um 
mask just with the cage and the simple sense logo on it it's just classy so um what do you think brian oh man yeah when they revealed that uh Ulmark mask oh it made me feel it brought me back to when i was you know six or seven years old and it wasn't a question if the ottawa senators were going to make the playoffs it was a question of you know who are they going to face in the first yeah. round right I know. It's, it's back when our problems were our problems were you know struggling to get past the first round and for a few years in a row which was frustrating yeah um that's what ended up you know we that's why we axed jock martin the first time around yeah. um <laughs> but yeah like it's a it's a beautiful modern take on a on a you know instant classic yeah. Um, beautiful modern take on a classic that's such a yeah that's such a classy line yeah i i literally while you guys were chatting about it i was looking at looking at the differences and it's not you know it's not a ripoff it's mm. it's more of a tribute and yeah, um tribute. you know Lalim developed quite a bit as a goaltender he put up some incredible numbers for a number of seasons while he was with ottawa and it's just it's so cool to see that come back yeah definitely <laughs> It is pretty cool. I'm, 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 I'm absolutely loving it. I've, I've watched the video a few times as well, so I'll try and get some pictures and stuff in here whilst we're chatting. But uh, so obviously there's been some more additions like Nick Jensen. There's been David Perron, mm -hmm. Noah Gregor, Nick Cousins, Michael Amadio, Jan Yannick, who I absolutely love from the franchise hockey manager games. He's such a good utility player on that. <laughs> Not that that's a scouting report at all, but um, anyway, he's very, very good on that. Um, uh, I'm. <laughs> But apparently, Steve, he's a Steve Stavros guy, isn't he? So um, he's uh, he's been signed to a two-year, uh, one-year two-way contract. So um, and obviously we've got Carter Yakumchuk, who just he looks like he's slotted right in. I don't think he's going to stick around the whole season, but I certainly think he's going to stay for the first. What well, I, I suppose Zub's injured as well at the moment. How long is that going to be? He's not participated in any preseason action, so. Um, yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens there. But I can see him sticking around for the first eight or nine games and then being maybe sent back to juniors. But he's just he's stepped up. I know it's pre-season, but you know, there's people competing for jobs on the teams they're playing and also on the Sens. And he hasn't missed a beat. He's a really good. Um, um, and obviously, you know, players to go. I mean, there's been, there's been a whole list of people, you know, absolutely. But there's been some big, big names on there. Jacob Chikrin <laughs> with my hat. Um, it's going to age badly. Um, we got Parker Kelly and Eric Brandstrom. Yes. I don't understand why they let Eric Brandstrom go, in particular, because he signed with Colorado for an ent almost like an entry level deal. And it's like, I, I think he wasn't the best defenseman in the world, but this guy's a high pick for the Vegas Golden Knights, and he was not a bad player last year. He did, he did really, uh, you know. I mean, what are you expecting from the guy? He's still young, and to get him on that sort of a deal, you know. I mean, I think if they had signed him, I think they would have. And we would have ended up buying out um, Travis Hamlet uh, his last year, but um, but you know we've got by all accounts Travis Hamlet's coming in in really good form. Uh, he's really sort of fit this year. He's really um, he's had a whole preseason, and he looks like he's ready to go. So hopefully we get we get a, a Travis Hamlet back at sort of full strength. But um, yeah, Parker Kelly and Eric Branstrom really sort of were head scratchers for me that they let them go. Um, I was a big Parker Kelly fan. I think he gave his heart and soul last year. Um, for the Sens. In fact, I would have said he was one of the young son heroes last year. He came up with some important goals through the season. And to let him go and to see him sign a deal at Colorado for very little, it was a bit of a head scratcher. But um, yeah, so obviously Corpus has gone as well. Rook Chartier, Boris Kachuk, Yuri Smikow, Igor Sokolov, um, and obviously everyone's favourite, Dominic Kubelik. And uh, obviously Mark Kastelik has gone as well. So. Um, yeah, so what do you think of the Sens business um, over the uh, off-season, shall we say? Were you, uh, and obviously, Travis Green as well, new coach. What, what did you think, Blake? What were your, what were your thinkings? Well, I, I'll be honest with you. My initial reaction to the Travis Green hiring was, his name's not Craig Berube. <laughs> but, um, I was the same. But, but I thought, I, I, but, then I, but then I put my rational hat on and thought, okay, it's still the off-season. We have to give him a chance. Yeah, I agree. I, I think it's one of those things. Uh, the names that they were linked with for so many, for so long, 
Um, I mean, you know, the, the teasing of Patrick War as well and things like that. I know that was when Jack Martin took over and stuff mid-season, but I mean, he totally changed the Islanders when he came in, and I think that's sort of what we needed last season. Um, but you know, obviously those uh, those connections with Van Lauer, um, they never really came to anything. But you know, the names they were banding around, and then to get Travis Green, who has been let go by. The Vancouver Canucks and uh, was it New Jersey? Was that as well? From memory, I believe so. I believe um, New Jersey before Vancouver. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it's not a stellar record, but let's be honest; those teams are in different eras, um, different areas of the sort of development of the team. And you know, if he's going to come in and drill this team really well, then you know, maybe maybe things are different this year. You hear he's a bit of a taskmaster and stuff. He, likes accountability is big on that whereas Craig Berube who I really wanted I get I always got the feeling he was holding out for the Leafs though because I think they would have they would have appointed him much quicker than they ended up doing well plus the Leafs, the Leafs would money to pay him yeah exactly so um yeah I agree on the Travis Green thing I was a little bit subdued when they appointed him but to be honest you know what I've liked what I've heard from the guy um in all honesty I think he's he's spoken since and apparently he's had a lot of sit-down chats with everyone. Um, and, yeah, we'll just see where it goes. But uh, um, what, what do you think, Brian? Well, I think uh, certainly the trades that happened this summer were necessary. Ottawa obviously came out of a very tumultuous year. Uh, started off with positive note, new owner, um, which was great to see. Uh, but consistency. Consistency, consistency. Ottawa lacked consistency all year. When they were finally able to get up and fire off, fire on all cylinders, they were almost unbeatable. Like if, but they they weren't. They were they were not very consistent. Their defense was like a freaking sieve. Um, I'm really glad that we were able to get rid of Mark Kastelik. He was a uh, you know, I think his season highlight was when Jacques Martin first came into the coaching, came in as the interim head coach, as well as Daniel Alfredson. And I think being a recently married man, we need to give a lot of credit to Daniel Alfredson's wife for allowing him to do so. Um, the Yeah, his season highlight was definitely uh, not finishing a check on somebody and then getting reamed out for it on the bench while being filmed. Uh, by Dan that was pretty tragic. It was just, it's not hard to break, to, you know, toss all your momentum into somebody else instead of turning away from them to go back to the bench all lazy, lackadaisy, like, you know? Yeah. Getting a getting a player like Linus Ulmark is great. Um, I'm, I'm always going to butcher his name. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's great to see uh, a fresh fresh face in in um in ottawa's goal in ottawa's net um but i'm a little bit sad that we got rid of uh jacob chikrin as a big chikrin fan um i don't on the surface of it i'm i don't think it was the best trade in the world but i'm optimistic that um nick jensen is a is going to be a good player good defensive player and consistent for ottawa uh chikrin outscore jensen by miles way more points than jensen put up last year and also there's a bit of an age gap jensen's you know in his mid-30s and uh chikrin is in his late 20s um so we'll see how that fares i feel like uh in for the longevity of Ottawa's defensive core, I would have rather have seen a uh, an, an extension for Chikrin. Um, but I think, in terms of, in the short term perspective uh, of gaining more accountability, experience, and um, consistency, I think Jensen was a uh, was a good pick. Mm-hmm. Also, making cap room, just throwing. Um, gosh, what was his name? I'm making I'm making a, a, a muckery. Yeah, Kastelik? Matthew Joseph. Thank you. Matthew Joseph. Yeah. Yeah, just throwing Matthew Joseph to the wind like that, just without, you know, you could have at least gotten a second round draft pick for him. Like, 
and all you got was future considerations. I, what does that even mean in this business? Does it actually lead to anything? I think you said um, first time around, does it mean you get a Christmas card? Which I thought, yeah, exactly. Does you get amazing. a Christmas card and a box of chocolates for it? <laughs> I you know, that it was better be nice. amazing. Or do all your car, do all of your players get, you know, their own new car or something like a Honda Civic <laughs> or whatever? Future considerations, love it. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, I get it. You had to make, I was looking at the numbers. Um, you know, you, you needed to make the cap space for, for Shane Pinto so you could sign him for a few years, right? Um, but I just, I would have loved to have seen this get more for Matthew Joseph. He was a very yeah. consistent player. He's a gritty player. Uh, a lot of talent. That's I mean, just... he, was, he was one player last year, actually. That, sorry, I'm just going to put my phone on charge. Um, All right. He was one player. He was one player last year that completely changed his game, completely turned his game around as well. So it felt like yeah. we just started to see the better, better of him, and then um, all of a sudden it was like, you know, he may have well not have even bothered because we just moved him on anyway. So mm -hmm. um, it was it was a bit frustrating that we saw a, a probably one good year really with Matthew Joseph. I mean, this time last year everyone was like saying, oh yeah, get rid of Joseph. You know, there's no chance that he's gonna you know turn it around and things like that so yeah um yeah i mean it's 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 weird that you say that i mean i i'm 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 very much in the same camp as you i was really shocked about the return they got for chikrin um now it doesn't mean nick jensen's a bad player at all i just don't know enough about him but um i think blake also touched on it um mm -hmm. in the first time that we recorded but um the locked on sends um mentioned this as well because when chikrin got traded um, I remember going to watch the Locked On Capitals um, uh, broadcast, and I wanted to see just how like they were thinking about it and what. And Blake was right in what he said that a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, sort of Caps fans were saying like, "You're going to love Jensen, you know, he's because he's a heart and soul guy." And you know what? From the preseason, he's looked pretty decent. Let's be honest. I mean, he's 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 finished checks. And he's, he's always talking out there as well, I've noticed. And especially the Pittsburgh defeat a few nights ago. Um, he just looks... Yeah, it, it, it's it's like what they said. They wanted to upgrade. They wanted to get more senior guys involved and stuff. And I think they've done that this year. Especially with David Perron, who I'm a big fan of. Um, from seeing the, the Detroit Red Wings last year play the Sens in Sweden. He was a he was a great player. And he saw what yeah. he want. Um, and I can see where they're going. And the same also with players like Nick Cousins they brought in. Yeah, okay, he's not the oldest guy, but the guys want a Stanley Cup and to have him in the dressing room, he's he's been there, he's done it. And it's like to, to get more players like that. But I mean, you know, speaking of additions and sort of additions and subtractions from the, from the playing staff, I can see this being a really, really important season because you know what? I think if they get to, if they have a horrible, horrible November again and, and, we get, and we're just going nowhere, this roster next year is this, this season's outgoings are going to fail in comparisons to next year's. I can see Giroud being traded at the, the trade deadline. Yeah. You know, Giroud's on the last year of his three year deal as well. He's on the last year of his deal, so it makes sense to move him. Kachuk's going to want to get out because it's like, you know, they can't blame the guy. He's going to be 25 this year. It's a really, really important season, so they have to get it right this year. There's so much riding on it. We've got Olmark. Now, okay, we've been there before. We, I remember this sort of fanfare when they got Matt Murray from the Pittsburgh Penguins, and that they were saying, "Oh, he's going to be amazing and stuff like that." Now, Allmark's a completely different kettle of fish. He's been there. He's won a Vesna. I don't think Matt Murray had won a Vesna. He might have I mean, just at the time of talking. I think. Um, but you know, I, sort of, I, I'll, I'll be. I'll be impressed when they start to get these wins on the board. They, I will never fault their effort and stuff like that. They're a young team, but at some point, that young team every year is getting older, and you can't keep using yeah. that whole, oh, they're young, they're learning. They're young, they're young. Yeah, they were learning. You yeah. Know, they're, they're getting older. The, the, the core now, I mean, I've seen it being a, a football fan in the UK, the England team. We've had all the potential in the past three football tournaments, the World Cup, two Euros, we've gotten to the semis and two finals, and we've lost three times because they haven't got that experience, but they can't keep using that whole, like, 
This team is ready. We are just a few additions away. Corpusano gave up so many goals last year in quick succession. He just had zero confidence. And I just think the breath of fresh air with Allmark coming in, the, the aura mm -hmm. around that guy, he's so positive. And I think it's it's good because he, he and Forsberg are going to be on that tandem. And I, he's just a positive guy. Well, I don't think Corpusano was a talker. Never heard him sort of, apart from if he got hit a few times when he would go to the edge of the ice to the officials moaning about something. He would never be chatting to his sort of, you know, the team and stuff on the ice. He was just very, very sort of like focused. But his focus was never, never good enough. You know, he would get beaten very quickly and his rebounds were atrocious. Um, yes. I mean, I'm saying this, I'm not, I'm not a goaltender. I, I play defence, but you know, I mean, I'm not a goaltender or anything. Um, but you know the basics that I know is that like if you're at the NHL level, there's certain things he was not doing last year, and he was losing this game. Um, All Mark coming in completely different. I just get such a positive vibe from that guy, and I think I hope that people like that coming into the dressing room, Peron, um, All Mark, uh, Cousins, and um, you know just uh, Jensen. Sorry, that's the other guy I was trying to think of. It's late over here now, um, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, people like that coming in and just being alongside Brady and even Timmy now as well. You've got Giroud also there. And you've got Zub, who's getting, he's getting more experience every year. And Shabbat. I mean, you know, I've got Shabbat jersey on here. He's my favourite player. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, I, I, I really like the additions this year. I think they've gotten older. They've gotten meaner. And, yeah, you know what? I don't think they're going to be outdone as many times as they were last year. And to be fair, if we can get even a wild card position this year, I'd be amazed, absolutely over the moon. But that's for future. So, uh, but anything else you want to add? Yeah, the, the, the Ottawa's defense core last year, the old man on the defense core was Travis Hamanick. Everybody else was under the age of 29 years old. So, yeah, you know, big. JBD, I'm, I'm really hopeful JBD um, has a good season. I think he's yeah. got it in him to have a really good season um, and to be consistent. Yeah. I'd agree with that. Definitely agree with that. And I mean, another thing I think of, I think Jake Sanderson is a very underrated defenseman in the National Hockey League. Not a lot of people know about him. I think he's, no, he's, he's obviously he's not very well know. known. He's not like he's not like Chara. He's not like uh, any uh, or Dowdy or any other well known defenseman in the league. But he he's very good on his feet. He breaks up plays like as mm -hmm. he's supposed to. And I th I in my opinion, I think he's a very underrated defenseman in the NHL. I would hope that he plays to his uh, cap hit of eight million dollars. Oh, there's no doubt about that. That guy is just, he's totally, oh, that man, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that guy is. The thing is, once you get to the playoffs, I think more people will notice him because you, the amount of times that you watch the broadcasts and say like, you know, you're, you're hearing everyone talk about him and like, but the teams that are coming in, they always, I mean, again, I watched a few of the Locked On uh, podcasts. And I, I, I remember watching Locked On Seattle. Um, and they came in and they were raving about um, Jake Sanderson after the game, saying like they never realised he was that good. And it was so good because he definitely this year, I mean, he surprised a lot of people the first year he was in, but last year was a real sort of, I mean, it got him the contract, obviously. It was a contract year. And it's like now he's at the start of this big deal. I think he's he's only going to get better from here on out. And just we just need playoffs. We just need playoffs. That would just be the next step. And then we just go that bit further every year. Once we get playoffs, I, I'm convinced this team will be will be. I think if we are able to play consistently, defensively, yeah. they're not going to win every game, but they need to play consistently. Yeah. If they yeah. if they're able we to need play, a good November. Yeah, <laughs> that's the yes, one thing November, I'll say. No like, more trips you know, on in the defensive end, especially. I think they they shouldn't have an issue making the yeah. playoffs this year. Agreed. Were you yeah. just about to say no more trips to Europe, Blake? Yes, unfortunately, I did. No more Sweden trips because that seems to do them in. I don't know what well, they, they should come to the UK. There's a lot of talk about the NHL wanting to come back to the UK. I would be all over that if they came to the UK. And you know what? I'd personally show around any of the Sens 
um, sort of media team. If they want to go on a trip around London or whatever, I will happily walk around with them and I will do it free of charge. There you Maybe go. Maybe for a ticket. There you so go. We'll see. But um, anyway, and I know two Canadian co-hosts that would come and join me. The so, uh, Toronto, fun little tidbit here: the uncle of one of the players on the Revelstoke Grizzlies uh, just retired from the Cardiff team. Oh, the Cardiff Devils. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. See, it's happening. UK. It's the third highest growing sport in the UK, and the UK plays a lot of sports. Um, and it's an, it's a, it's so the team I play for, I have to go and I start training at 10 30. No, uh, that's a, no, it's not. I start training at um, 10 30 pm and I finish at near enough midnight. And that's the only time we can get a block of ice over here in the UK because it's so popular now. There's so many people playing, there's not enough ice rinks. And obviously, you know, we don't have the cold winters like you guys have, we have the wet win winters. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely down to cold winters. Hockey has really taken off over here, and I mean you can see that with the World Cup, uh, World Championships. With you know, the, I mean, Team GB got hammered by everyone, but they played really well against Canada, and they still lost. But you know, Conor Bedard up against uh, up against the Team GB was uh, anyway. But um, you know what? They're there. They've gone up three divisions in the past five five or six years. I think that's Team pretty GB. good. Oh. It's it's oh, really good. They've done amazing. Um, I'm really super proud. Like, and you even see it on the NHL games. They're now rated a lot higher. Um, and you know those games are put together by scouts and everything. So, um, but anyway, like I said, it's over here. It's definitely becoming a more sort of popular sport. So talking about um, uh, growing sport, Kenya just got their very first IIHF national team. <laughs> Did they? Kenya, really? Kenya, Kenya has a uh, double IHF team now. Uh, next thing you'll be telling me Jamaica have got a bobsleigh team. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Cool. Right, I think we've done the transactions now. Then the next point I'm really, really intrigued to hear your thoughts on. So, Timmy Stutzler, last year had a bit of a down year. Yeah. 70 points last year for him. Will this guy... Will this guy rekindle and will he be a 60 to 80 point player this year or will he be an 80 to 100 point player? Blake, you start, mate. Well, if, if, if he can stay healthy, he can easily surpass 90 plus points. But that's one big if. It's not like we're talking about Josh Norris here, but with, with, with regards to Tim Stutzla, the sky's the limit for this guy. He can, it, as we saw with, with the with that batted out of the air goal last year against Detroit in the Global Series, it, it, the sky's the limit for him. He's, he, I, I've seen him dash through defenders, deke through defenders at games and score some beautiful goals, highlight real goals. And you know, you know, with him, him and Brady and and Claude Giroux on that top line, you know, it, it's I, I think it's great. Sky's the limit for him. So that's a pretty resounding sort of 90, 80 to 100 points player this year. What do you think, Brian? I think he's going to get 85 points this year. I think yeah. watching him dangle around, trying to dangle around all, all of the first half of last season, just, you know, hoping for the puck to be magnetically glued to his stick like he did, like he did yeah. the year before. Uh, it certainly yeah. hurt him <laughs> in his quest yeah. for, you know, putting in Ottawa's need to put pucks in the back of the net. Um, well, no, no, he does have a weird yeah. tape job. I'll give him that. Yeah. Yeah, he has actually. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, definitely. Like a very I agree with that. tape job on, on the blade of his stick. I thought it was, a, like a, thought it was a competition bit, to see, see who had the biggest knob on the end of their stick. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with that. <laughs> well, well saved. Well saved. Yeah. I, mean, I would... I, I would agree with you. I, I, I sort of think he's going to get around the ninety again. Um, yeah, I think eighty-five. I, yeah, I, I think he's going to get. Yeah, I'd say I say he's going to get between eighty to ninety. Now, I'll yeah. tell you why. Um, personally, last year, uh, he was he was playing with a wrist injury or an elbow injury or something, wasn't he? That he picked up quite early on in the season. Now, it's sort of coming back to my earlier point with the fact that they've gotten a lot more grittier. They've got older players now as well. Now, mm -hmm. when when Timmy had that season in 2022, 
to 23 where he scored the 90 points. They were tra they are they were in a bit of a scenario where Montreal find themselves now where it's like they've got young players coming through and they play with creative freedom like you know Slavkovsky last year really came to the fore because there's no pressure on them if they get playoffs it's great and you know brilliant <clears throat> but there's no pressure for them to make the playoffs now the year before it would have been great if they made the playoffs and they made that run towards the end of um, the 2022-2023 season where they just sort of fell off the rails with about four or five games to go um, and Stutzler was having because there was no pressure but this year last year sorry coming into it 23-24 uh, there was all this expectation and there was so much expectation on these players shoulders they'd lost to the brink out that year so Okay, the Brinkat didn't actually chip in with an awful lot before, but it was still productivity. They lost Pinto literally the whole season, let's be honest. They only came back. Sens were way out of it by then. They lost Norris last year. That's three players that Timmy had to pick up the flak for. Um, and also, you know, that's... this. I'm trying to explain why I think he got 70 points last year. There was a lot on young shoulders there. A player that's sort of carrying... I mean, he was carrying the franchise at times last year because Brady Kachuk was just unbelievable last year but oh, yeah. they were trying to do everything offensively and, mm -hmm. and Claude Giroux was trying to do it but let's give the guy a bit of credit you know the guy's 36 I mean he turns 37 very soon um he might even be 37 now um but you know Timmy had a lot to do last year this whole team was a mess last year and the goaltender we've already touched on this year with the um additions we've made with a settled goaltending um, with a bit more grit going forward, there's going to be less for Timmy to do. He can concentrate on what he does best, and that's dangling and scoring. And you know what? I think it would be absolutely... I, when I wrote that question, I thought there is no way any of us are going to go for 60 to 80 points. I think you're right, Brian. I think it's going to be around... It's going to be around the... I think it's going to be between 80 and 90 points. I'd be amazed if he gets under that, but I'd be overjoyed if he goes above that. I would just love it. Um, I love the guy's effort, and, uh, you know, and playing injured as well. My favourite player is Thomas Shabbat, and you know I, I'm a big fan of Thomas Shabbat ever since he came into the league, and he played injured this year as well. So one of my favourite things, I I regret I didn't do it, but the Global Series where we were front row, and at the end of the tunnel, Thomas Shabbat came out, and he was standing there with Tyler Clevin, um, Zach McEwen, and I think. Someone else, I can't remember who it was. Um, anyway, there was four players in front of us, and I, I sort of called out Thomas, Thomas, and he turned around and started chatting to me. And I was like, it was so good just to be able to chat to the guy. And mm -hmm. I, I should have got this jersey signed, but I was so like in that moment and like thinking, like, I'm actually chatting to this guy, and he was telling me about his injury and stuff. Like, yeah, I should be back really soon, and you know, it was that was a real sort of cool thing. But anyway, totally sort of transition there. Um, but anyway, um, I. I think all day long next season he's going to be a sort of 80 to 90 point player without a doubt. He's going to have less here's to a, on. This here's year. a good stat yeah. for you. So the 2022-2023 season, Tim Stutzla's uh, shooting percentage was 17.1%. Yep. Last season, it was 9.4%. He got, he got 228 shots on goal in the 2022-2023 season. Last year, 23-24, he got 192 shots. All of his goals from the 2022, from two years ago, were from the either right in front of the net or center and to the off to the right side of the net, player uh, offensive right side. Um, whereas last year he got one goal off on that side and hardly any on the other side either, but it's more than zero. And one power play goal from memory last year. That was it, and that was yeah, and that was against San Jose. 32nd team in the league at the time, which I heard the other day. So, oh boy, poor old San Jose. They they lost. I think it, it was either in October or November of last year. They lost two consecutive games where they gave up at least ten goals. Yeah, in those two games, like it, it was to say it was an on ice dumpster fire was an understatement. The, there, uh, there, I remember that the I image of that one little. One they were like kid. last year's version of the Chicago White Sox this year. Yeah, one, I remember specifically the image of that one little kid who had the sign, 
my, oh, yeah. my very first oh, San Jose oh. shark sign. <laughs> and they well, lost they like 11 eight, to 1 they, or something like that. They oh. were 8 nil down. They were 8 nothing down after the first period, weren't they, or something? It was something ridiculous like oh. that. And it's like, I think they, I think gave, they, gave, them, I think they gave them free tickets. I, I hope they did. You would have to, wouldn't you? You would have, you would to. have to. It just, yeah. That's tragic. <laughs> The thing is, that's going to stick that poor kid now for the rest of his life. He's going to have that TV footage following him around. So yeah. it's like, but okay. So I think we'll agree. Tim Stoops is going to have a bounce back year this year. He is. He's going to mature. He's going to have matured, and the team around it's him gonna is going to have matured as well. It's going to happen. Now I'm going to ask you this question. I like the Stoops the one. When I was thinking of these questions, I was trying to think of stuff that hadn't. I mean, the Stoops the one's been asked a few times, but I haven't heard many people ask this one on the podcast I listen to and things like that. But what? Do you think one thing that's going to happen this season? It could be Sens qualify for the playoffs, or you know, like I said earlier, it could be a complete overhaul of the roster if they're out of it by November. So, Blake, one thing you think might happen this season? One thing I would like to have happen, or one thing I want to have happen? Hmm. One thing you think might happen, probably. I. Th- well, before I answer that, the one thing I want to have happen is for Ridley Gregg or someone else to do another empty net point blank slap shot against the Leafs in the dying seconds of a game. What That's I got think... Perron written all over it. Yes, <laughs> yes, and then Morgan Riley will ha- have a little temper tantrum and then get suspended for a few games. But um... <laughs> oh, that was that, that would be great. You just make that model was... a signature move. Just a clap bomb into an empty net before the buzzer goes. <laughs> yep. Every, yeah. They just hold off to make sure the goalie gets pulled every game. Yeah. Just, yeah, off you go. Yeah, so, but but versus what I think will happen, I think Ottawa will, at the very least, compete for a wild card spot. And that's what I'm expecting them to do. At, at the bare minimum, they have to compete for a wild card spot. They have to be playing meaningful hockey games in February, March, April, and well, for the whole season, basically. They have to play meaningful hockey games if they want to if they want to have a chance of making the playoffs. Because the Atlantic Division this year is going to be an absolute bloodbath. You've got the defending Stanley Cup champion Florida Panthers. You've got the Bruins, who are always perennial perennial playoff contenders. You've got the Leafs. Mind you, they, they lose in the first round, but the, you still make the playoffs. <laughs> you know? I mean, to be fair, we still have more playoff series wins than they do in the last 20 years. I, I heard that. I heard that. That is that is an insane stat. I heard that a couple yeah. of weeks ago. Oh, old... I, saw, I saw a graphic on Facebook the it, other day. It's because where... it exploded. I saw a graphic on, on Facebook the other day that showed that um, not only do the Toronto Maple Leafs Almost pay almost the most per beer at a hockey game. They also drink the most too. Is that so? Yes. <laughs> that makes Drowning sense. their sorrows. Drowning the sorrows. It makes complete sense. Really. Empty out the liquor cabinets at home. Yep. Well, I, I I think you're right on the the whole wild card thing. I think that's that's a decent shout. I think that's what they're aiming for this year. Personally, Personally I don't I like the wild card it. format. I think the NHL should go yeah. back to the 1-8 formula. It's simpler, yeah, I agree. easier to understand, yeah. and you don't have to rely on this division-based format where it's possible for five teams from one division to make the playoffs, whereas the other division, only three teams would make the playoffs. Yeah, that's fair Normally, it would be 4-4, four four, but there are circumstances that have happened where 5-3 and three would make it. I, I get it. Well, wasn't there a team last year that got in? Wasn't it the Islanders that got in because they had less overtime losses or something? Ridiculous I think it was, like Was- it was Washington got in last oh, year. It was 40 wins. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was them. You're right. Yeah, I heard that earlier today. Probably enough. But, um... And then they probably. What, what about you, Brian? Me, I think I'm going to keep it. Uh, I'm going to keep it simple because I don't want to pump up my hopes too much. Um, I think Ottawa is going to have a more consistent season. Um, I think Ottawa is going to have play consistently through the month of November. They're not going to. That's mine. They're, 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 you don't, don't you? I think, I think that they are going to 
yeah, they think they're going to play consistently through the month of, of November, and their season isn't going to be completely derailed by it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a knock on from that, I think they will compete for a wild card spot, and people aren't going to be wanting to. All their players aren't are going to not going to be wanting to jump ship. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, I'm in agreement with you. I, I, my one thing I've got written down here is November. I've just got November on the line. <laughs> Yeah. If we just take a few wins out of November, I don't care a few overtime losses as long as we get a point. Yeah, loser just points, man. Points That's where things are great. That, that they they add up over a season, and I think it, it's got to be it's got to be enough of November every year is the is the one month that no matter what season it was over the past two or three years, it's always been the the killer for us, and we've even if been out of it by the, Christmas by American Thanksgiving. Yeah. Then you're unless you go on a run like the Edmonton Oilers did last year, oh, where that was well, insane. Wasn't they, it? Where they won, I think it was 16 or 17 games in a row. They went the entire January without losing a game. Yeah, it's pretty pretty impressive. That and, and uh, that that was a special team because you know to go all the way to the final, go down three nothing, and then come back to tie the series. I, I mean, if, if I was the coach of the Edmonton Oilers after that loss, I would say, you know what, guys? You you, you guys put, put a hell of an effort in. Yeah, yeah, we lost. We came. We ultimately came up short of our goal. But this is a special team. Yeah, mm-hmm. I agree with that. I think that's well put. I mean, the whole November thing, I think if you can just get a few wins together and also that builds confidence coming into the Christmas period, especially if you've got a big stretch on the road, 13 games on the road. You know, that's a and that that will be the stick that people will beat the Sens with at the end of the season if they don't qualify for the playoffs. It will be the whole thing. Well, you know, they had a thirteen game road stretch, but yeah, okay, that that's fair enough. There's a lot of travelling in there. But at the same time, if you can pull some wins together in November that we have not done over the past few years, that's gonna make up for any sort of shortfall that we have in that thirteen game span. Mm. Um so I'm not I'm not expecting us to win every game. I think this year this team is a lot more balanced. So I can mm-hmm. see us getting more wins than previous seasons each month. And if any improvement in November is going to help the points total at the end of the year, isn't it? Let's be honest. So, yeah. um, but that being said, um, like you said, I just hope the one thing I hope doesn't happen is that they miss the playoffs because that would just be, I mean, that would be disastrous. Yeah, Players are going to want out. Now, you could probably argue if players do want out, the Sens are going to get a King's Ransom for the players because they don't have to trade them because they've got long contracts and stuff like that. Yes, they'll be unhappy, they'll be disgruntled, but you know what? If they don't have to trade them, they don't have to trade them. But I think they will, and they'll get a King's Ransom back if they trade the players. Like you know, I, I think I think Stutzler will stick around, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think... And, and like I said at the beginning... I wouldn't blame Kachuk at the end of the year. If they haven't qualified for the playoffs, he's seen his brother win a Stanley Cup, and he's, yep. let's be honest, the Panthers are going to qualify again this year. Um, how they do it, I don't think they had the best team last year, um, but, you know, that's just me. I, I honestly thought the Oilers were going to win it last year with the run they had, but, um, you know, that, that didn't happen, obviously. Um, but, yeah, you know, he's going to want out and stuff like that, so I, I get that, and, you know, I'm not... I'm not sort of just saying that's what's going to happen. I'm just saying that's what I—that's my worst fear. But yeah, I, I'm with you on that improvement in November and a wild card minimum, a wild card. They've got to be competing for it at least. If they get close, you know, if you miss out like by a few points, that's it's still a failure. But from where we've come from last year, and if Timmy Stutzler has an amazing season again and Linus Allmark signed up for another year. We get Yakim Chuck probably coming through at that stage as well. Tyler Clevin's got another year under his belt. You know, Sanderson's made that position his own. Um, and hopefully... Your we've contract, had a they have some faith in him. Yeah, exactly. And also, let's hope that Josh Norris has had a good season. Because if he comes off of a solid season, not even a solid season, just a season where he plays the, all the games. Like, James yep. Chukram played okay. all 82 games last year. So, it's like, that never happened. So, <laughs> but anyway... Um, Yes. Okay. So we're all in agreement. So we're pretty much on the same there. It's it's sort of November and uh, World Card minimum. But, uh, <clears throat> let's let's just see what happens there. But um, so players to watch. Is there anyone that you're keen to see, and anyone you think is gonna do big things this coming year? 
Anyone you think, Blake? I th- I, now, it might not happen this year, but I think eventually Tim Stutzler is going to be going to hit 50 goals. Yeah. May- maybe not this year. It would be nice if he, it would, sure would be nice if he did. But I think eventually T- Timmy's going to hit 50, 50 goals. Yeah, I'd agree with that. That would be pretty amazing. Um, I mean, look, if he improves this year and this, like I said earlier, and this team takes off, I mean, he scored a pretty nice goal against Pittsburgh the other night. Um, you know, it was a pretty, pretty nice goal. Um, sort of coming in off the, but yeah, I mean, it just he, he, he looks more confident this year. And uh, another thing, also, I want to touch on with Tim Stutzler is that last year I remember watching a few of the um, breakaway videos, and they did one with um, Stutzler training in the off season with Mo Sider. Yeah. Um, he said, "Oh, this year I'm trying to bulk up, trying to." You know, become a bit more physical and stuff. And I, I can't help but think as as the Senators take a six, what's that, six three lead now? Drake Batherson, Jesus. Um, if only that was real. Um, anyway, um, yeah, he he bulked up a lot last year. Now sometimes if you bulk up, that can change your game. So I just hope last year maybe, well, maybe he bulked up a bit too much. Maybe he changed his game and obviously he got injured as well. So maybe this year, you know, he's come back. You know the, the the strengths and the strong points of his game and stuff. Maybe he hasn't gone too mad on the weights and stuff over um, the off season. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, I, I I totally agree. I think Stutzer could definitely hit 50 goals, whether it's this season or next season. Who knows? Could be this season. But um, so is that who you're going for, Blake? Yeah. Solid choice. What about you, Brian? Angus Crookshank. I think Angus Crookshank's going to come and he's going to play. Over 30 games with the Sens this season. I think I think Zach McEwen is going to have an injury, and then he's going to get replaced for a long time by Angus Crookshank. Oh, that's dark. Everybody's got a really nasty <laughs> every, injury. Everybody's going to fall in love with Angus Crookshank and start chanting the beef at the, the CTC. Beef. What's your beef, bro? Beef. Beef. We we said beef. we said we wanted Blake in the first recording, which I didn't record. Um, this one is still recording, by the way, an hour and five yes, minutes. Yes, it is. Um, so, uh, yeah, we wanted to see if Blake could get a beef chant going. Beef, 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 beef. <laughs> <But> just... <laughs> Angus so, the um, Beef uh, Crookshank. I really want that to be his nickname. That is, even that if you like can, Blake, even if you can just send a video of you shouting it out in the seats, I would just be amazed. Beef, beef. And, then, you know, <laughs> one day, one day it's just going to take off. But that, I'm not kidding. I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not sort of. This is a retro gaming channel that I I put up all this stuff on. This is not going to get a lot of views. This video, so this no. will be hidden away. And then when this chant starts after you started it, Blake, someone mm-hmm. will find this video and then they'll go, "This is where it started from." And then that will be it. You'll be a celebrity, Blake. This is what it is. Do it, you coward. Yeah. Do it. Start I'll saying be like, beef, but girl. And then my second prediction <laughs> is that JBD is going to get to have a thirty-point season. Oh, that's a. Oh, okay. Uh, going to double that's his a point big output. step up. Yeah, that is a big step up. What did he get this year? Wasn't it twenty-one? Yeah, he got, he got fourteen point. points. He got four goals and ten points, assists. Sorry. Played seventy-two games. Yeah. And I think he's going to step up and I think he's going to put together a thirty-point season. Oh, that's that's good. I like that. See, that's the sort of thing I was hoping to get, like someone like that. So I've got, I've I've gone pretty safe on one of mine. Um, that is a that is a brilliant call. So I'm, I'm going to watch that. So 30 points for JBD, right? 30 points for JBD. Yep. Oh, that's going to be good to watch. I'm, I'm I'm intrigued by that. And the fact is, we've got this on camera as well. We can go back. So I'm I'm going to go. And this could go horribly wrong as well. I'm going to go for a big season for Thomas Shabbat. I think he's going to find his form again. I think he's he's had some surgery on his wrist. I think it was wrist surgery over the off season. Mm-hmm. Um, he's looked decent in preseason as well. Um, and again, with a, with a, a few of those um, duties now taken off his plate, with Jensen coming in, and you know you've got like I said, Yakum Chuck, who's been he's been pretty surprising. Uh, they've got Jensen, like I said, and they've got Clevin coming through as well so they've got a, such a good group now coming through in those areas and i think it's just going to be a, a matter of time before his ice time isn't as high which means that he's 
is is in better condition to play more. So, um, you know, people should be able to step up and play some more minutes this year. Um, so I'm hoping for a big bounce back season for Thomas Shabbat. And also, I'm a massive Tyler Cleven guy. I absolutely love Tyler Cleven. Um, I really, really hope he nails a roster spot as the uh, on the third pairing this year. Um, and uh, yeah, I really, really hope he pushes this year because I think this could be a really, really big thing for the Sens if they can get another defenseman coming through who's highly touted, mm -hmm. been there, done it. And imagine if some of these youngsters start to get playoff experience. It's only going to whet their appetite and that will just be it. It will just be an explosion and hopefully we'll be back to say like 2005 to 2009 and then obviously you know the um the uh the, the playoffs and the um the mid sort of teens when they went there the year escapes me 2017 wasn't it so yeah. um the one the one thing i will have to mention though is if and when they make the playoffs they're gonna have to win a game seven eventually because the senators yes. as of right now i believe they're oh and five or oh and six rather in game sevens throughout their history wow i never knew they that that's, that's want, they have never won a game seven Got it. They're, they're going to be they're, done. So they're all, all their all their big boy players, every and and everyone for that matter, is if let's see if you get to a game seven, even if it's in the first round, you got to step up. The the playoff hockey is a lot more intense um, than it is in the regular season. So everybody's going to have to step up and chip in. Fair point. Fair point. Yeah, because you can't, you can't argue with that win a big game and and game seven is no exception yeah well I, I i think the points that we've all made though i think there's some there's some good sort of points there for players coming through and having breakout seasons this year um yeah. i mean uh, one thing i would say it's going to be interesting to see how shane pinto does this year because he's a full year he's coming he's got a contract but he's got you know these are two big years for him now i think is he 24 Shame pin. Uh, I will let you know. Is he a bit? Uh, uh, Twenty-three or twenty-four? Let me see. Uh, so the only reason I say that is twenty-three years old. Twenty-three. So you know this this bridge deal that he's got, two-year bridge deal. He's got a decent term on it with you know pay, um, but you know this is a big thing for Shane Pinto. If he can have a, a two solid years where he produces. I think you know the Sens one, one hand are going to have problems because they're going to have to sign him um, longer term, and by that time you've got players like um, by that time after two years you'll have Clevens' deal coming up because he burnt a year last year. You're going to have some of the youngsters, so Yakumchuk will probably be on the roster by then as well. You're going to have to sign a, a replacement probably for Nick Jensen around that time as well. You have Allmark's contract as well, so all of this stuff is going to be eating into the team's money. Um, you've probably got Claude Giroux's deal coming off the books by then, but um, yeah, I think there's going to be some um, there's going to be some real interesting contracts coming up for sure for the Sens in the next few years. So um, <clears throat> but, um, I can't imagine yeah. Claude wanting to go anywhere. Uh, he grew up around no, Ottawa. I think, no, I think it's just whether the Sens will be able to keep him. Even oh if was, yeah, I, time, well, I think it's going to be a matter years. of. I think Claude is going to be like, depending. I think. What will end up happening is they'll either do an either either do a, a one or two year extension, or he's just gonna hang it up because I don't think I can't see him wanting to go anywhere else. He's got a family, yeah, and he that's it. He wants to end his career in Ottawa. So I think if they did anything with Giroux, it's gonna be another year at least. Because yeah. especially if they get playoffs, that would just be so gutting. If they got playoffs and then he retired off the, if they went out and not the first round, that would just be, mm -hmm. yeah. be awful. For them. Anyway, so. We come to the last question before we open some sticker packs. Yes. So I'm looking forward to these. These have been on my desk, I kid you not, for about a month, and I've tried not to open them, and I haven't yet. But anyway, um, so we've got some there. Look at that. Um, so the last question is playoffs. And you know what, Blake? I'll give you a rest from going first because I'm going to go here. All right. And I think we've already touched on it. I'm saying yes to playoffs. Now, I said yes last year, um, and I didn't the year before, <laughs> but I said yes last year. After the year Stutzler had the year before that, I was so convinced last year, and I watched, so I got really, really into the, uh, it was called Twitter back then, <laughs> back in my day, on all yeah. these fields where, uh, not houses and stuff like that, 
back in my day when um, Twitter was called Twitter, not X, um, uh, YouTube, obviously, and Instagram, I was watching absolutely everything. I couldn't get enough of the content because the Sens were out of the playoffs and they were still locked on Sens, were still putting out loads of content. Sentinel was doing stuff as well. Um, and I really bought into it. I watched all the draft coverage. I was like, right, this year's going to be the year. And it felt like the England football team again, getting those hopes up for it all to fall apart so badly. Um, and I'm still... Yeah, um, you know, it's uh, it's not... It, it's something... It's a well-trodden road for me with following the England national team. Um, but uh, anyway... Um, I bought into the hype. I was all all there with it, and you know Jonas Corposalo was god. Um, you know more like Jonas Crapasalo, um, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, you know um, this year I'm quietly confident. I think they've done some great off-season additions, and it's been. I think it's going to be good to watch the Sens this year. I really do, and I think. If they can just get close to the playoffs this year or have a really sustained, decent season, um, good things are going to come. They should be able to sign all mark. They should have progression from their young core. And if they get playoffs, they're going to get experience. And they're three key things, I think, for this season. And that all stems from a playoff run or just reaching the playoffs, in my opinion. So what about... Let's go Brian next. <coughs> Uh, this year, I think the Ottawa Senators are going to make the playoffs. Um, I don't know how. I hope it's not in a wild card slot. November. That's how they're going to do it. November. Exactly. That's how they're going to do it. Probably. Exactly. Do it. Um, but yeah, they're going to they're going to make the playoffs this year for sure. Um, well, for sure. I, I'm sure. I cannot, I cannot argue with that at all. Yeah. Blake, we finally get to you. Yeah. Just well. <laughs> yep, they're going to make the playoffs. That's it. Anyway, thank you. Good night, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Short and sweet from Blake. Yeah. Well, like, like, like you both mentioned, they have to have a good November. They're, obviously, they're not going to win every game, but playing good hockey for the first, you know, 15, 20 games of the season, that'll more than likely translate into playing meaningful games, you know, February, March, and April. They have eight home games in the month of April and one road game. There's no excuse by this point. That's it. The accountability and the excuse. So, so, my, right. so to answer your question, yes, uh, but I'm very cautiously optimistic. I don't want to get my hopes up too high in case we crash and burn again. But okay. I'm really, really hoping that that's not the case. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I and I don't think yeah. it will. I I for some I have faith in the players, and I have faith in management and ownership that they that they made uh, the right moves over the off season. I I was kind of bummed out to see Matthew Joseph go, especially yeah. for next to nothing. But. Uh, we need we needed the cap space. Yeah. Put it bluntly. Well, I I think that's that's three yeses across the board for the playoffs. So, I'm I'm all good with that. I'm all good with that. So a jump cut in the video, guys. As you can see, the game playing has become very tense indeed. We fast forwarded it. It's ten nine Maple Leafs because. We are coming to the end of the video now, and I wanted you to see how this game plays out. Now, I wasn't playing this game. I didn't. I didn't say. I wasn't very clear. And also, just just touched on the jerseys, the classic jerseys. I went for 2007 retro jerseys. But um, anyway, this game, uh, I wanted to see the end because it's computer simulated. All I did was revise the rosters, made Aston Matthews captain, Austin Matthews captain for the Maple Leafs, and all that good stuff. Um, and then I totally redid the Sens roster along with the Toronto Maple Leafs, but. It is a cliffhanger, this game. So anyway, so we've come to the end of the actual um, video. But uh, we, I told the guys to get some stickers or some cards. Just as a bit of a fun way to finish it off. Unfortunately, Blake wasn't able to get hold of any. Um, but we will correct that because we're going to do some more videos down the line. Because we've just chatted whilst I was forwarding this. It's been good fun. And I think there's plenty of, us, plenty of stuff for us to get our teeth into with more episodes. So uh, 
Brian, so what packs have you gone for? I have a, viewers? I have a 2022, 2023, uh, where, where are we here? Yeah, 2022, 2023 MVP pack. Nice. And a 2023, 2024 MVP pack. These are actually pretty hard to find down here in... Spokane. Nobody carries hockey cards except for like one shop. Well, you want to try living in the UK, my friend, because the first pack that you showed, I'd ordered two packs from this guy in the UK and he sent yeah. me these. Now, apparently these are the worst hockey cards that you can buy. The reviews of these cards, it was a really, really bad stack. They are called um, Upper Deck 2020-2021. Uh, so during the COVID years, um uh collect the young guns rookie cards so I, I have no idea what's going to be in here but i'm excited these have sat on my desk for i kid you not about a month i wanted to open these um so shameless plug i have wouldn't it be um, great if angus, uh, angus crookshank was in one pack wouldn't it be great now <laughs> i also have a retro football channel uh 90s soccer channel and i have sticker packs from 1998 so i'm not i'm not uh, these are a lot easier for me to come by so, um, you know, uh, but the problem is these all fall apart. So totally different. But um, yeah, so a shiny there, Blackburn Rovers kit, you know, just uh, anyway. Um, so this Rovers. is like, this has been literally, or is that called Black Eye Rovers, they call them. Um, who was the team you actually went to watch uh, Pompey play, Brian, when you came I did, and we beat them. With Robbie Three Savage nil. playing. Anyway, 3-0. Love yeah. it. Great days, great days. Anyway. We've jumped to we've jumped to the side there. So anyway, I am over the moon to get these, and it's probably going to start a very very expensive habit for me now. So uh, anyway, Blake, Brian, send me cards. Send me cards. You got so, it, dude. Brian, you go first. You're going to open first, and what we're going to ask people to do in the comments, if anyone's actually watched this video, uh, <coughs> is to let us know who you think has won on the card selection. All right, I'm not. We're going to look at these together. Let's go. This is a Ryan Sutter. I don't know who he is. <laughs> this is a Matt Duchesne. Matt Duchesne, he used to play for the Sens. Oh, did he really? Yeah. I should know that. <laughs> we can edit that. <laughs> He's a year older than me. He's from Halliburton. There we go. Uh, Matt Dumba. Dumba. Yeah, did he sign with the Sens in the off season? There you go. He's from Regina, Saskatchewan. I think he went to Dallas, didn't he, Blake? I'm not sure. I know he played with Minnesota for quite a while. Ten yeah. points. Johnny Goudreau. Oh, man. Oh. What a sad news. Yeah. What a sad news. Yeah, that is awful. I mean... Well, rest in peace, Johnny. Yeah, man. Dude, that's brutal. Johnny Hockey, rest in peace. That yep. Actually, no, that's very apt. Very apt. So, I commend you for picking that pack. Thank you. Uh, so I have whatever this card is. is an MVP card. And I have another Johnny Goudreau. Oh, wow. Oh, man. It's meant to be. Oh, it's the Calgary days as well. Look at that. Yeah. Because he got traded to the Blue Jackets. And he signed with the Blue Jackets. Yeah. Yep. Bobby Brink. Bobby Brink, yeah. It's almost as good of a name as Radic Bonk. You ask me. Radic... <laughs> is it, oh, my is goodness. It, um... Who, who uh, now? Al Alex... Nadel Jovic. Nadel, 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 Nadel Jovic. And then we have Charlie McAvoy. Charlie McAvoy. Nice. Yeah, decent, McAvoy. Yeah, decent year last year. So. Okay. So I'm going for the first card opening of the really bad card series. So I've, I've been really sad recently. I've been watching people open packs of uh, old hockey stickers from 1992 onwards um <laughs> on instagram very sad but uh, anyway so it's a really small screen here so i'm gonna have to actually i'll use my phone to have a look as well so we have uh, actually i'll tell you what i'll do so um so we have tory krug solid yeah good player we have uh dylan gambrell former sen so he actually went to the Sens. I think he was traded from... Wasn't he sent over in the Carlson deal, Blake? Gambrell? No, he wasn't. He was signed... He was, tra 
he was traded. No, I'm pretty sure they picked him up on waivers actually in the COVID season. Yeah. The sure. only trades um, in history where Ottawa actually won the trade. <laughs> it was free. <laughs> um, we've got Thomas Hedl. Hertel, yeah, a German. Hertel, it's Hertel. I should know that, yeah, German pronunciation oh, cool. for football. But uh, he had been with the Sharks before. Uh, yeah, because he was pretty big, I seem to recall. He was very good on the NHL games. Oh! <laughs> Derek Stefan for the Senators. Cool. So he wasn't with the Senators right. very long. Was, what, what is the term you guys use? A cup of coffee? So he was with you guys for a cup of coffee, is what I yep. always hear. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so... Uh, we have uh, Thomas Harley, what we would call a shiny in the UK, Blackburn Rovers esque. Oh, sorry, throwing this down. Uh, we have Connor Hellebuck. You know what? This hasn't been a bad, bad That's pool so cool. far. Solid. Connor Hellebuck's pretty good. We have uh, Kevin Shattenkirk, not a bad player, and uh, Noah Dobson had a good season last year. I seem to recall Noah Dobson. I don't think he plays for them anymore. I think he plays for... Um... Oh, no, he might play for the Islanders still. No, no, don't worry about that. That's fine. Okay, so I think the winner from that, obviously, has to be... I'd say Connor Hellebrook's pretty good. But, yep. um, obviously, uh, Derek Stepan, an absolute legend player. Look, you know, we, the Senators couldn't get enough money to keep the guy. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, so um, uh, Connor Hellebrook, I think, is the uh, is the winner in that for me. So much talk about them signing him last season, wasn't there, Con Hellebuck? Oh, yeah. So, anyway, I'm pretty happy with that. Oh, man, so, this is definitely starting to have it. So we crack open the second pack? You, you go for it. You go for it. All right. It's still 10-9. <laughs> it's tense. Tense. We have Simon Varlamov. Varlamov, yeah. We have Alexander Wenberg. Nice. Oh, we've got a Matthew Kachuk. Oh. Is that pro <laughs> yeah, of course he'll be at Florida then, won't he? So. Heck yeah. We've got a Jordan Kiru. Nice. St. Louis Blues. Yep. We have a Taylor Hall. Oh, is that what? Uh... Oh, that's before the trade when he was at Boston. So he's at Chicago yep. now, isn't he? Got Jamie Ben. That's a good pack. Dallas okay. Stars veteran. Oh, you're going to love this one. Drew Doughty. Drew Doughty. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> And then we've got a, a we've got a, a Jared a Jared Spurgeon. Yep. With the wild, I think that's a good one. Definitely a winner for that's me in here. That's a good here. pack. I think I think that's the I think that's the best pack so far. So yeah, uh, I'm I'm gonna have to say Drew Doughty because I'm a I'm a I'm a pretty big Drew Doughty fan. Yeah, you can't you can't fault what that guy's achieved with when he signed when he went there when he got drafted. They were a bad team. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, so the last pack of disappointing cards. So what we'll do next time, Blake, we'll definitely all get some cards. I think yeah. we'll get some and we'll all open them. Maybe we'll try and get the same series. So, um, right. Okay, so turn them over. So <laughs> I thought I'd open the same, same card pack here. Tory Krug again. <laughs> Dylan Gambrell again. Oh no! No, just that. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. Um. Oh my god! This is. I, the next card's the same as well. Look, okay, Dylan Gambrell, twice. All right. <laughs> Troy Crew, just to show you, I'm not making this up. These are two different packs I've opened. Hence what I got. Yeah, they're both open. Right? Not, not kidding you. Yep. <laughs> it's like it's Groundhog. Okay. Thomas Hedl. Alrighty. <clears throat> Two of those as well. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh, the legend. Oh, I'm so glad I got this guy. Oh, man, that is a that is an absolute win. Okay, we've got Derek Stepan. Sen's legend. Sen's legend, which, um, yeah, it's good, actually, because, you know, we always like to have the two cards. So, um, yeah, Derek Stepan. So that's four for four, the same packs. Um, oh, we do have a different one here. Alex Petrangelo. That's a nice card, actually. Champion with the blues. Yeah, this one's called Dazzler. It's one of Dazzlers, which sounds a bit dodgy. but um, yeah. And we've got, um, yeah, just to return to form, uh, we've got another Connor Hellebuck. Um, I don't know what's gone wrong with these stickers. It's almost like they've, uh, these, just to prove again, this is the same card. It's, I've got two. It's the same. I didn't think they, I thought it was random. They did all this stuff. Maybe I'll buy two different sets. We've got the legend that is uh, Kevin Shattenkirk. Not once, but we've also got him twice. So, uh, yeah. There you go. Good. I, I'm not going to... You know what? This bad um, this bad set of uh, cards is actually living up to its... Um, living up to its... Uh... Has that pause? Yeah, it has, hasn't it? Oh, no. We've lost some time there. Sorry. Didn't realise that stopped. Um, if you want... And... The last one, Noah Dobson. So there you go. Yeah, they do There's sell. One different card. At, at the shop that I was at, they do sell like the entire box of this season's MVP cards. They have them for sale. If I can do pick that. Up, do I can oh, pick the up the sends box. are equalized. Look at that. The sends are equalized. Who is it? <laughs> Ridley Greg. <Very> good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. How fitting. So he scored the. The first goal then scored and possibly the last, so they've just equalised. Man, what a cliffhanger. That is a real disappointment. I I'll tell you what, I can't do with getting a whole box full of Derek, Derek Stefans. I'm not being funny. I can't I can't do that. Connor Hellebuck maybe, but that is that is crazy. I can understand why these um why these cards are um are so badly reviewed because I bought two packs there and they are literally the same cards. <laughs> You know, I've got like double of everything apart from one of them. I got Thomas Hanley, um, Thomas Harley, and the other pack I got Alex Petrangelo. Um, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, if I'm going to give you guys that, oh, the Sens have scored again. Michael Amadio. Nice. How the yeah. Sens snuck it in the last seconds. Have they done it? Yeah, so if anything has come from this video for you guys, don't buy these cards, because they are ridiculous. What, the upper buy deck? these cards. So, are those the upper deck ones? They are upper deck. Um, hmm. Very, very disappointing. They smell up the so, cleaning. Uh, I will definitely uh, not be buying those again. So, yeah, we'll have to get some cards for next time. So, um, can Agreed. the Sens hold out a minute? Can they see it out? But, um, oh, it's a cliffhanger, look. Oh, so um, in here. guys I just wanted to say thank you so much uh, for taking the time I'm sorry I didn't hit record first time it's all right. but that is that's pretty standard as I did moan about the technical issues I had with StreamYard <coughs> before we even started so um, yeah and you know what It's I'm not even disappointed by these cards getting doubled up because it's um, you know what it's been good to catch up this isn't going to be a podcast or anything that's like totally you know, we're going to go into all the tactics and stuff like that. This is just free mates chatting about stuff, reconnecting and um, catching up after so long. Um, it's been a fair while. We've all been busy. Um, obviously, Brian's uh, in his new place now. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think we're going to make this semi-regular because it'll be good to catch up. Maybe we'll do a watch along good. game. That might be quite funny. Um, I, can give, I can give you guys some uh, some uh, Revelstoke Grizzly updates for some second tier. Let's do that. Second you know what? And maybe in your maybe I'll head to a, maybe I'll head to a Guildford Flames game just down the road with a flaming G instead of a flaming C. So uh, <laughs> yeah, you guys, <laughs> gimmick copyright infringement is not uh, is not yet visible. Oh, the sense of one. Excellent. So I, I don't think I cut the video off before um, before you see the tallies at the end. But uh, what a nail bite! A uh, ten. For the Maple Leafs, 11 for the Sens. So uh, I just realised all Mark's still got his Bruins hat there, his Bruins helmet. So look at Spider Cat. He's Heck yeah. Absolutely loving it. 
Brody. Look at the strut that man has. So, uh, absolute beast. So, um, anyway, guys, um, as we've seen, the Sens have cleaned up there. Will they clean up in the 24-25 season? We all think they will. We think they're playoff bound. But what do you guys think? And also, if you can recommend any different cards. There we go. Look at the, look at the total. <laughs> I'm going to take it. 97. Uh, 97 to 74. Right. Toronto hits 98 to 72. Wow. That's. Yeah. Yep. It's pretty, it's pretty immense. That was, that was, that was a game. So, three, on, Ottawa went 3 for 14 on the power play, and Toronto went 2 for 10. Yeah. It's all <laughs> in the stats. All in the stats. But um, yeah. yes, guys, thank you so much for joining us on this uh, no problem. inaugural no problem. episode. Happy and uh, reconvene, reconvene free... halfway through November. I think we we've got to do something for sure. I think that Sometimes would be um, what we'll do is we'll work something out where we can um, where we can all catch up again and we'll we'll do That's a recap. Good. Yeah, it's got to be. I think it's got to be pre-November as well if they've had a good. Oh, season for sure, until for then. sure. And then yeah. maybe before Christmas, <laughs> we'll totally. do one when it's all all fallen off. <laughs> yeah, I got a jet though. I I'm I'm gonna be late for dinner. No, you go, man. You go. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe, and we'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.